All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Harnessing Helium. I'm Jacob Swin, a marketing manager with Nova Labs, uh, the founding team behind the Helium Network. And I'm here today with Christina and Augustine from Ubidots. Very excited to talk to you guys about well, some cool stuff you're doing. Um, just a quick, um, some background here for why we're doing this episode. So on March 31st, um, there were some, we had made a lot of big announcements. We had some, you know, rebranding, the Helium Foundation, Nova Labs were announced. Um, and part of that was Helium Console, the hosted version. There was actually a device and organization cap implemented on that. And some of the reasoning behind that was to spur an ecosystem of partners to kind of host their own instance of router and console working further towards decentralization. And you guys at Ubidots have been one of the first people to get your own instance up and running and you've got a beta ready to go for people to test and provide feedback. So we're here to kind of let you guys talk about that a little bit. It's very exciting and, you know, awesome that you guys have gone so quickly with this. So um, do you want to do a quick introductions for yourself and then we can kind of get into this? Sure, sure. And it, it's exciting indeed. And we're very excited to be here in this session. And thanks, Jacob, for having us. Of course. Um, I'm Christina, head of business development, and he's Augustine, our CEO. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. Thank you for opening the mics. And uh, let's do a quick intro for those who might not be familiar with UbiDots, and then yep. I can take it and, and explain more about the new integration. Perfect. Sure. So We've been in a lot of sessions and Helium Hacks are here as well in Harnessing Helium, but it never hurts to do a little- New refresh. people all the time, right? New yeah. users, yeah, absolutely. So basically here at UbiDots, we want companies and people to solve business problems by using Internet of Things. So we provide a whole set of tools for integrators, OEMs, or just entrepreneurs willing to develop and launch their solutions without having to hire a software development team or spend like thousands of dollars in time to market. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's basically giving you the tools to be like the superhero of, of the IoT industry and the business. <laughs> Love to hear it. Yeah. And make it simple for people to get started, right? And going, that's that's the key right there. Yes, absolutely. Um, so Ubidots has been a Helium partner for, I think, a little over a year, right? A little bit since, a little longer than I've been here. Um, so, you know, our mutual clients during that time have been able to send data from Helium console to Ubidots using a pre-built integration. Um and, you know, that's, you guys have had one of the most popular integrations on Helium console. So what's, what's with this new integration? Can you talk a little bit about the differences between like what you're doing now previously compared to previously? Yeah, uh, building on what Christy said, uh, I like to see Ubidots as a way to give superpowers to IoT entrepreneurs. Like I'm an IoT entrepreneur myself. And uh, I think there's a lot of tools out there that you can harness to go faster to market and to actually create not just an IoT project, but sometimes an entire IoT business using global tools to solve local problems. So uh, following that story, uh, most of our cl clients are uh, system integration companies or entrepreneurs that detect a problem that they can solve through IoT. So imagine that you are um, an engineer in out of college in Australia and you detect that uh, the farmers have a need to monitor the soil moisture in their farms, right? So you pitch them the idea of selling a device, a soil moisture device uh, for 10 bucks per month. Uh, and then you go and build an entire uh, hardware and solution uh, out of this need, right? Yeah. So before uh, the, this new integration, uh, or even before Helium, what people had to do was to come up with their own gateways, uh, be it LoRaWAN, be it other type of technology, uh, mm -hmm. come up with their own hardware, PCB design, you name it. So there was a lot of steps. There were a lot of steps that you needed to go to market. Now with Helium and the LoRaWAN ecosystem, you have access to LoRaWAN devices that already solve the need to do soil moisture, for, for example. Yeah. Uh, and with Helium, you don't have the need to manage uh, gateways, understanding there's an incentive for people out there to create this network, which has been great. And up until last year, we have been uh, tapping on this potential by making it very simple to send data, as you said, from these LoRaWAN devices all the way through the Helium console into UbiDots, where our customers can create uh, entire applications with their own domain and their own branding and go and sell it out to uh, whoever has the specific need in a specific industry. Mm -hmm. What's changing now is that even at that point, 
uh, the, our clients had to manage with uh, data credits. They had to create a Helium console account. They had to sort of become Laurel One experts in order to understand how the whole stack worked. And this is great, but sometimes some people, they, they want to do everything. They just want to have uh, a single interface where they can manage all of this without having to create a separate account in the Helium console. And now that you have capped it to 10 devices, you know, it, it's uh, the incentive is even stronger. So right now uh, we're erasing the need to create a Helium account. Uh, we're erasing the need to create the Acousto integration. So uh, all the, the, what the users need to do is they create an UbiDots device and they add the LoRaWAN credentials as properties. I can share screens real quick to just let you show you how, how simple that can be. Yeah, that would be great. You should have access to do that. that. They, they have immediate connectivity. Like just, just need to wait a few minutes and they will start seeing the data coming into the UbiDots account where they can decode it at will depending on the device that they have at hand. Um, just to show you, uh, and again, there might be people that are not familiar with UbiDots, uh, but here's a device that, that that's the, like the typical device viewing UbiDots. Uh, and so far, what you see here is all standard. So it could be Wi-Fi, it could be Laura one, it could be cellular, uh, but the change comes here. You, you For the devices that are linked to this, uh, Helium integration, you would see three properties. And this, in these three properties, all you have to do is to add your dev EUI, dev app key and app EUI of the device. Sometimes they are shipped uh, in the device itself. So here I have a, a GPS tracker. In the box, I had these three properties already. And here's a, a rack wireless a smart button, which also came with these credentials in the box already. So mm -hmm. these are things that you already have at hand. So you can just uh, copy paste them here. Uh, and then we have another section called the plugins, where is you, you would start seeing the data coming in uh, after you provision these devices. So all you have to do is just, you, you would go to an interface like this, click on the Helium plugin, click on the decoder. And this is where you would just put your code to understand that data frame that your device is sending and put it into a friendly, UbiDots friendly version, which is just a JSON format that we can uh, share later. Um, and here you can see, uh, I have a device actually running right now as we speak, sending data almost every hour. Uh, and as you can see, these are all uh, data frames that I've been getting directly from our private console into my UbiDots account, no need to create my own uh, console account. So that's like a very top level overview of what we've, we've been working on. Um, and of course we have a, 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 a wait list, an open beta uh, list that you can all join and we can share the, the, the link if you, if you need. Sorry about the background noise here. <laughs> Can't hear anything, no worries. No, that, that was great to see. So, I mean, talking about like the problem you're solving by creating this, um, you know, I would you say one of the biggest ones is just making it even simpler for people to, you know, get their devices set up and send data. Like you said, they don't have to go back and forth between UbiDots and Helium console and things like that. They just create it all on UbiDots and never have to worry about going to console. Exactly. That's yep. the whole idea. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, so talk to me a little bit about use cases. Like who is this for? Are there specific use cases you can talk about that you're kind of enabling by creating this? Sure. Yeah. Um, I want to mind that. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, so as, as we mentioned before, this is typically for companies normally could be entrepreneurs or established companies that want to solve problems through IoT. So we're very horizontal horizontal in terms of the verticals that we can have, ranging from agriculture, manufacturing, smart cities, like you name it. But we have a couple in mind that are great. Um, yeah. We have a customer in, in France, actually, and he has customers all around Europe where um, he comes from like a pharmaceutical like family. And his parents were like, could you monitor these fridges? And he was like, I'm sure I'm an electrical engineer. I know a little bit about sensors. Um, and he actually deployed a couple of sensors to measure the fridge. And that escalated to not only being able to do it with the pharmaceutical industry, but more like in manufacturing in anything that has fridge. So he sells to ice cream shops, to anything that has to monitor assets. And oh. he's, uh, right now he's running on helium. So uh, it's great to know that 
he doesn't even talk about IoT in his value prop. He's just like, I'm taking care of your assets and I'm just monitoring everything that has to be in the fridge. And now he has more than 200 customers by having this model. So it's like, that's well you can replicate easily because with Ubidas, you don't only visualize, but you have an entire business model. So that way, that's why we go back to the business cases easily. Gotcha. Yeah, very cool. Or did you have so, No, I think, I think let's build that on that example because, um, you know, prior to this model, what the the customer, what the integrator had to do, or the IoT business owner, they had to uh, configure the device and even go on site, deploy the devices, install them, um, and just make sure they had connectivity wherever they were installed. Now with the, this new model, you can rely on the uh, global connectivity, and you can ship your devices to the clients. Therefore, reducing the installation costs. Also, reducing maintenance costs, assuming that there will be a point where you need to, where previously you had to go on site to do some maintenance. Yeah. Uh, now with this uh, yeah, global connectivity plug and play, you can just ship it to the clients. And I'm sure that will open up more doors because the, the cost per device per month will decrease as, as the cost per of maintenance decrease. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of building on that, I guess, you know, you've built a solid business in the IoT application enablement space. Like what what prompted you kind of to enter the LoRaWAN connectivity world? Okay, let me take that one. Uh, I think it, 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 a huge part of that was that the fact that we had this problem ourselves. You know, gotcha. uh, I'm originally born and raised in Medellin, Colombia. And we used to have clients uh, back in the days where we were doing end-to-end -end IoT. Mm -hmm. And we had to, uh, you know, do all the logistics to make sure that these that devices were deployed and delivered uh, in, in difficult places, you know, re very remote areas. So I always thought how great it would be if we could just put a SIM card back then, you know, Laura One was not uh, as, as spread as it is today. So I, I always thought about a SIM card, the concept of the global SIM card. Uh, but then when, when we migrated or when we pivoted to being a software only company, then it was impossible for us to offer global connectivity because we, we would have had to sell SIM cards. Yeah. Now with, with Helium, it's great because we, we, could be, we can become a, sort of a global virtual IoT operator without having to put like a physical exchange in the middle, which was a SIM card in the other idea. So it is very exciting for us to be able to offer this uh, powered by Helium. Um, and it, of course it took a lot of handshaking between the, the private server and ours, but now that it's coming to uh, 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 yeah, a place where it's actually working and we have some use cases, uh, it is very exciting to know that uh, a startup could become uh, a global network of operator or offer global connectivity uh, in, yeah, just by being a software company. So I think yeah. that's very powerful and we look forward to see what you guys create. <laughs> no, that's, that's a really cool background story too. I like that. Um, okay. For, you know, we obviously have to talk about costs a little bit, like for Ubidot people using this Ubidot's connectivity, like what can they expect? I know this is the beta, but obviously you're going to push to production at some point. Um, what can they expect kind of in terms of costs? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, as you might know, uh, the, the, the cost function, it's, uh, it's not an easy one because it depends on the data credits, it depends on how often your device sends uplinks or on the relationship between the amount of uplinks and downlinks. So we're trying to, in the same way, we're trying to uh, abstract the complexity in the technicals, we want to abstract in the pricing as well. So yeah. we are looking to come up with a, with a flat price per device per month uh, that covers 90% of use cases. And to do that, we need to see more use cases so we can know that this would uh, cover most of them. So we're targeting that fixed price. And then for, for custom requests, we can always uh, deploy a new server and, and, or, or serve uh, an enterprise client on uh, more specific terms. But for the majority of our users, we're looking at, at a price per, per month. 
hopefully below the dollar per month. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, okay, so where, you know, where can people get started with this offer? Where can they start testing and providing feedback? Yeah, let's let's drop a link here on the chat. Okay. Uh, we have a type form where we're collecting. Uh, we have close to 100 uh, interested users and companies that uh, will test this. We started sending out some um, initial tests. So if maybe if we can, you can share this type form. With yep, I will put this link just for our listeners. I'll put the link in the video comment, video description on once this is up on YouTube and shared on social. So they should be able to get to that. No problem. Um, yeah, no, yeah, this is. Oh, sorry, Christina, go for it. One thing to note is that um, you should have a, an Bidox account. So it's both filling the type form so that we have you in our cohort for beta testers and an Ubidats account, either a file or paid or STEM account. Um, but that's one of the, the instructions that will reach out to you and tell you what to do and how to guide you through the process. Okay. So once they fill out the type form stuff, you will reach out to them with that. Perfect. Yeah, I would, all right. yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you both so much for this. Do you have anything else you want to add at all? Yeah. I would like yeah. to invite people to try it out and we love building things based on feedback and we're very transparent and, and open like development team. And this is what we, we build this for to get to know what you think, how like the process and everything. So we, we count on that feedback and we would love to, to go faster by just engaging actively with the community. Um, I, I'm also on Discord in Helium's community Discord server as Christina Hubirat. So I would love to keep in touch with, with anyone who's trying it out and, and yeah, just engage in conversations. Perfect. Yeah. And Christine, I can put your Ubidots, uh, I mean, your Discord handle in the in the video description as well, if people want to reach out there too. All right. Yes, this is very exciting. So thank you guys for coming on, talking about this. Uh, happy to be working with you. I know the team, you know, with the Helium Network is super excited for this. So yeah, awesome to hear. Thank, yep. you, thank you both. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. See you later. See you later. Take care.